Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thanks for joining me I'm Katie and we're just going to use one colour today A little while back I had the June Art Snacks box and included in that was a Daniel Smith watercolour stick in the shade Quinacridone Burnt Scarlet God that's really hard to say Now I've not really used these before the art snacks box and to be honest it's daniel smith it's going to cost the earth so i've got no intention of buying any more anytime soon so what am i supposed to do with just one stick of color a one color painting of course and the ideal subject for this is a sleeping red panda i used a reference from pixabay to draw the panda and the colors matched so why not? Now the thing to bear in mind when you're just using one colour is, well actually it's two I guess, and that is tone and texture. Those are your allies here. For the panda's face I went in there with a wet and wet technique and just ever so subtly splodged in the colour. Great technical term right, but that's it, you just introduce a small amount of colour you can always build up those layers it is watercolor after all i left it to dry and then i worked on the background and i saturated this as much as possible with water and a good dilution of the color but not at its full strength but just to make sure that that page had got a nice glossy sheen to it because it had been a while since i got the old salt out i thought this would be a first good way to introduce some texture and I must admit it doesn't massively make a huge difference but it does add some texture and creates a difference between the background and the foreground. Now the background's all lovely and dry it's time to start working on that panda and I really want you to start off on the ears just just to help to develop the form of everything and tighten up some of them areas where I might have just gone over where I wanted to paint the panda with the background it's just a nice way of clearing that up and it's a good reference for the rest of the work I'm going to put in there. I removed quite a lot of the graphite and once that first wash of colour went down a lot of those details were lost especially at the angle I was painting from you might see it on camera now but from how I have to see it it's, it's different especially with all the light shining on it. So I guess really what I'm doing is turning the panda's face into a negative space and I didn't mean that to rhyme Oh, actually, I probably did a little bit. By carving into it, by adding the bolder colours around the edge, it just means that I'm slowly outlining it rather than just going straight in there. And I've also started to introduce just a little bit of texture on them slightly lighter, darker areas. That's a bit of an oxymoron, isn't it? But I'm sure you know what I mean. I'm also adding... A little bit of colour where the eyes are with the markings the panda has and that just gives me a good starting point to add in the fur details which is where we come back to texture again. Because I'd already put a layer of colour down and I'm introducing the same dilution of paint again it's obviously going to be at twice the strength so it's noticeable but it's quite forgiving if I make any mistakes. I've also decided to use a teeny tiny brush for this. It's not quite a rigor brush, but it's not short enough to be a detailing brush, I guess. And if I be really honest with you, it's a really cheap one from the works, but I kind of find them useful. Even though I'm not a fan of the works painting materials as such, or mediums rather, I don't mind some of the paint brushes, and this falls into the category of the ones I don't mind. I think they're okay, they're okay. They don't last forever, but they're pretty replaceable and this particular brush it's got just the right amount of snap so I can do those nice details and it holds quite a decent amount of paint I've definitely got quite a few hair strands in there now the markings on the panda get gradually darker towards the crown of its head and I do start to use a slightly more concentrated mixture of the paint and also, I combine it a little bit with the weaker dilution as well. This creates, I guess, a gradient between the two tones. 
it's still got a bit of an outline there but it's a softer one rather than just going straight in there with the dark colour and not and not allowing the two to merge. And this is really good as well because the crown of the head is quite a similar tone to the background and because you've got that difference of texture you've still got a contrast there so it's all possible to do a nice painting with one colour. Now not all colours are created equal I must admit and I was really lucky to be in a position to have a Daniel Smith paint but this could work with other paints you just have to pick the right colour. I wouldn't recommend any of the lighter hues and I definitely wouldn't recommend a bright lemon yellow purely because it just won't show up on the paper and you'll do all that work and it won't be for a great deal of payout really. Using a dark colour that's quite rich in pigments I think is the best way forward, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on it and it's a really good exercise as well. So have any of you lovely lots tried to do a painting with just one colour? I'd like to know how you found it so please drop a comment down below and I'll have a little look and see what you guys think. For me this came in really handy when I was quite broke and it, it was during my acrylic days but I would dilute them and use them as watercolours which isn't actually a good representation of how watercolours work. But nonetheless I would use them as a watercolour and if I was broke and I could only afford one tube of paint I'd buy one tube of paint and spend a bit more rather than buy a really cheap, not very good set, which I'm just not going to be able to do all that much with. But that's just from my experiences, and I can only offer you advice based on things I've gone through art-wise. So now we are adding another texture for the foreground, and this sleeping panda is on a couple of logs, just dozing away, and I just added a few lines. I added a base coat and then a few lines over the top and laid it in, just as I have with the panda and again it's that extra texture that separates the layers of the foreground, the midground and the background. I kept the details quite simple on those logs because I didn't want it to detract from the main star of the show there and I, I quite like how that turned out, it just allowed me to well, embellish a little bit more on the panda. I just added the finishing touches around his mouth, or her mouth, and a little bit of shadow underneath, and we are all done. I hope you've enjoyed this video, it's been a while since I've cracked open the watercolours, and it's been a long time for me since I've painted any nature. If you have enjoyed it or found it useful, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated, and if you're new here, why not hit that subscribe button and watch plenty more of my helpful videos. In the meantime, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!